joining us now, and we definitely need to hear from him, uh, the CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt. Jo wow. Jo Jonathan, let's, um, be, let's be very clear here, and, I, and, and maybe you can help with, it's impo you know, it's going to be impossible to draw a line that everybody's going to agree with. It is okay to come out in support of Palestinians. Coming out in support of Palestinians is not support of Hamas, is not support of, of, of terrorism. That can be done. Uh, what we have seen, unfortunately, from some in Hollywood has gone far beyond that. But I just want to say, I, I, I've, I've seen some posts yeah. that have been attacking people for simply supporting Palestinians. Look, Joe, that is that is that is they should not be attacked for that. That is far not. different than than a, a providing aid and comfort to Hamas. A, a hundred percent. We have a moral obligation as human beings to say Palestinian civilians should never be killed. Now we can argue about the causality to a certain degree in terms of Hamas's tactics. But let's be clear, saying that about talking about the dignity of Palestinian people, we have a moral obligation to do that. We have a moral obligation to call out these three young men who were shot in Burlington in what appears to me to be a hate oh crime. My God. So Just terrible. like we should be calling out the, you know, the Jewish elderly man who was bludgeoned to death in Israel, I, or excuse me, in Los Angeles at a pro-Israel rally. So I don't understand why people feel the need to deny the humanity of others. And at the same time, you know, uh, Susan Sarandon's not exactly, you know, David Ignatius, right? No. Like, I, I mean, and so when she makes claims and she posts things on social media that Israel's committing genocide, that it's lying about the murder of civilians, uh, I wouldn't go to Gigi Hadid, you know, to no. write a column in the New York Times. So I think we need to acknowledge that celebrities do have a kind of reach and a kind of power and influence, which makes when they get it wrong, it really reverberates. But that should yeah. not impede our ability to understand, again, the dignity of Palestinian civilians and the innocence of Israeli lives, too. Like, we should yeah. call out anti-Semitism when it happens. We should call out anti-Muslim hate when it happens. And we should do it full stop without qualifications. Uh, Jonathan, uh, part of the problem is, you know, early on in this conflict, we saw a lot of people afraid to speak out, actually in support of the Jewish people who had been yeah. slaughtered for a lot of different reasons. Uh, we on this show, and I know I talked to you about it a lot, we talked about presidents of universities, we talked oh. about administrators at universities, but the longer we get into this, and the more I talk to my own children and my children's friends, Got to say, you kind of hit the nail on the head right there. It's not college presidents who are influencing students so much as it is Instagram and TikTok. And yeah, so when somebody, and when, and somebody with 75, 80 million followers says yeah. something, uh, you know, they're not a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of younger people who know nothing about this conflict. They hear something from a celebrity, they're going to take it in. And they're not going to hear the correction five days later. That's correct. That's correct. And, like, let's be frank about it. We've been on this show. We've talked about Instagram. We've talked about Twitter or X. And you've seen my back and forth with Elon Musk. But we need to talk about TikTok. TikTok, if yes. you will, oh. it is the 24-7 is the news channel of so many of our young people. And it's like Al Jazeera on steroids, amplifying in intensifying the anti-Semitism and the anti-Zion with no repercussions. I've got to ask, Joe, like there's been a lot of lamentations about the fact that TikTok's ownership is Chinese, but you know what? Oracle owns 10% of the company. General Atlantic owns a piece of the company. Um, our friends at Sequoia Capital own a piece of the company. So does Sequoia and General Atlantic, does Oracle want to be responsible for spreading anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism? It's time to talk about TikTok. And I think we yes. need members of Congress to be asking them, why are they doing enough? And let me be clear, I've met with Sho Chu, the CEO. I've talked to their leadership, but it is long past time for TikTok and its owners and its investors to step up and say, enough, we're gonna take action. Yeah.
Make Frank, Frank Ford, do you have teenage kids? I do. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Like it is amazing what our, our children, what their friends, what younger people are getting, the unfiltered anti-Semitic bile that they're getting every day off of TikTok. And again, I didn't understand what was going on college campuses, why it was happening. Yeah. If you don't understand what's going on in college campuses, don't look at the University of Penn, right? Look at TikTok. I mean, doesn't That's so much, where this is. It makes me despair for the world that they're going to inhabit, just the low quality of the informational ecosystem in which they exist, where uh, demagoguery, misinformation circulates like oxygen. And it also makes me despair for the ways in which they debate one, one another, that they're yes. just incapable of expressing disagreement without resorting to hyperbole. And also right. the way in which everybody is forced to take sides about an issue which, which most people have exceedingly low knowledge, right, which is why you get so, extraordinarily ignorant on this issue. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't say that about a lot of issues, but on the Middle East, yeah. you know, people who have no idea what's been going on since 1948 yeah. will look at a 30 second clip and, and then they'll become and experts and determine. march across the college yeah. campus. They'll take over the building oh, based on the TikTok. Right, right, so on TikTok. <laughs> Jonathan mentioned the horrific shooting in Vermont of three college students of Palestinian descent. And we're now learning more about the suspect and hearing from the mothers of two of the victims. NBC News correspondent Stephanie Gosk has more. The suspect accused of shooting three Palestinian college students in Burlington, Vermont, has not been charged with a hate crime. But the mothers of two of the young men say they have no doubt why their sons were targeted. If they were not wearing the keffiyeh, right, if they were not speaking Arabic, I seriously cannot understand in any logical sense why he would pull out a gun and shoot. Elizabeth Price and Tamara Tamimi's sons, Hisham and Kanan, were shot Saturday evening, along with their friend, Tassin. Kanan is out of the hospital, but rattled. He's a bit jumpy. He's frightful. He's traumatized. He is. Yeah. He absolutely is. Hisham is seriously wounded. He is paralyzed, currently paralyzed, um, from mid-torso downwards. 48-year-old Jason Eaton pleaded not guilty to three charges of attempted murder. In 2019, a former girlfriend told police he had a history of mental illness, according to police records reviewed by NBC News. He was fully accountable. He had a gun, um, and he uh, tried to take the lives of our sons. Elizabeth says that. Hisham appreciates all the support, but worries about Palestinians at home. He said that of the uh, thousands, of tens of thousands of people killed in Gaza, there were about 30 that had the name Hisham. Both mothers say their sons felt the effect of toxic rhetoric on their campuses since the war began. I think that as a Palestinian, um, people see them as culpable and accountable. But from their homes in the West Bank, they hoped their children were safe in the U.S. I was and am incredibly angry that I feel like there's nowhere safe for Palestinians. I literally don't know where to go with my son. Oh. The, 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 and these three young men, I almost said Jonathan boys because yeah. they're the age of my yes. sons. Hey, they're so heartbreaking. Just in Burlington, Vermont. For, in Burlington, yeah. Vermont. And, you know, I'm, to Burlington? I'm so heartbroken for them. Burlington. I'm so heartbroken for them. I'm so heartbroken for their parents. And I'm so heartbroken that this could happen in America. Anywhere. Yeah. It, yeah. it is horrifying, Jonathan. Anyone who thinks that shooting teenagers in Burlington, Vermont is going to help Israel is nuts. Just like anyone who thinks yeah. that intimidating and terrorizing college students because they're wearing Stars of David is going to help a single Palestinian is nuts. Like, it feels like the tension is so high, Mika and Joe. We need leaders to just dial it down. Stop making wild accusations. Call out hate when it happens. That's all it takes. And yet, I don't know, you know, these university presidents you mentioned, Joe, the cowardice. Next week, the presidents of Harvard, Penn, and MIT are being compelled to testify before Congress and to explain how things have unraveled to such an extent that we have Jewish students being assaulted this past week at Ohio State, at University of Massachusetts. There was a referendum this week at Michigan about Israel committing genocide. We need presidents to say whether you are Jewish or Muslim, 
all our students are entitled to an education without fear of violence or reprisals of any kind. Do you know what you wow. call Jewish students and Muslim students? Americans. Yes. And yes. the idea, the idea that, that you have politicians that are trying to divide America over this, that you have, I will say, college presidents who um, uh, have been uh, cowards in so many respects. It's just, it's heartbreaking. Uh, Muslim students, Jewish students have to be protected. Yes, they do. Have to be protected. Once again, CEO of the Anti-Defamation League, Jonathan Greenblatt. Thanks. It's always great to have you on Thank these you so Fridays. Much. Thank you very much. And so